poker, get your fake announcements out now. Welcome back to D&D campaign with the friend. Oh, yeah, I am done. I don't know, man. <laughs> get sponsored already. Well, you know, if I could do something that would hypercharge my growth to where I could get sponsors, yes, but I can't because I want to do things genuinely and normally. I'm a black man stuck in a religious household. Please um, support my stream. So that's gonna cut out the recording. Anyway, so when we last gathered, we were in the midst of a mission to put another stop to a gathering of sorts by one of the many leaders of the Soul Liberation Cult. And while that mission was taking place, Drava found herself being held at gunpoint. She was in an incredibly disadvantageous situation. And as Yashua managed to knock her gunman away from her, suddenly several other enemies decided that they were going to join the fray as well. And amidst all the fighting in higher altitudes on rooftops, Mel, our infiltration unit for the ground section, <gasps> excuse me, she made her way and snuck around through a crowd and she happened to notice that the man giving the speeches of grandeur and delusion and what have you, as he spoke, she noticed that he was casting a spell, a trance-like type of magic similar to what Drava used when she was first introduced to our story and Mel quickly made efforts to bring a halt to that and amidst that process she for a moment was too late as the ones in front had fallen victim to the trance and as she tried to take down and end the priest those affected by the trance were following his beck and call his every word and things got to be a tad bit dangerous up until someone who whose mission we don't know yet decided to enter into the fray and lend a helping hand he wielded a very mysterious weapon that when swung seemingly when swung, it emits a noise similar to that of a cannonball being shot. And the party at the moment on the surface level sees him as an ally, but as for everyone else, no one knows if he is friend, a foe, temporary ally, or future permanent ally. But hopefully today, we will find out these things. And as all of the battling ended, Zero and Cynthia seemingly out of nowhere very quickly pulled onto the scene in a car and ordered everyone to get in and to bring the unconscious priest with them as to why uh everyone was suddenly forced to get into the car we will find out because we will resume with that session so if any of you have any burning questions to kick off the session feel free to do so if not i will continue as normal so I'm pretty Nothing out of ammo. Nothing from my side. <laughs> yeah, I'm like straight up out of ammo. And, yep. uh, am I gonna have to, like, just find some through combat, or? Uh, there are methods of which you can, uh, acquire ammo outside of combat. That's what they are, huh? You'll find out eventually. Hell yeah. Alright, so. <clears throat> uh, I will. Uh, this will be. Cynthia speaking. <clears throat> well, I. Uh, I'm sure everything went well. Um. <clears throat> the reason why we, uh. I guess kind of crashed the party was because we had a drone out just to keep track of the situation 
Uh, someone shot it down, and there were postings of social media on um, the incident about what was going on, and she paused for a moment, and she looked up to Mel. Uh, where you guys come from, you do have, like, internet and social media and all that stuff, right? Um, we have something similar, yes. Oh, well, that's good enough for me. Um, continuing on. So, when we saw the, um, the postings and whatnot, uh, Frankie and I very quickly put an effort to, well, scrub those posts off the internet. And before they grew any more frequent, uh, Zero had the bright idea to just get you guys out of there as fast as possible. And uh, that's what we did. Because, as you know, Chief has said before, we really don't want the public finding out about any of this. Um, because, you know, widespread panic is never a good thing to try to keep under control. And, well, you know, if there's talk of a cult being out in the public that's a really bad look for Frankie so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree I mean what happened there wasn't a pretty sight so glad we could be of service to not publicize it in any shape or form yeah uh thanks and uh, Cynthia finishes speaking, and she resumes uh, her non-stop eating habits as normal, and Zero speaks up. <coughs> so, uh, this guy in the red, who is he, what's his deal, and what in Gaia's great name is that weapon? So, oh. I'm Leon. I, uh, I guess I'm kind of from this region, I just... I've been having... these, like, visions, and... I, uh... saw, like, a... a large attack from... the, uh... like, it seemed like it was, like, the church or something, and there was, uh... I don't know, there was... just the end of times, and I... I don't know what, uh, like, how to explain exactly what I saw, but, um, I investigated, and I ran into this, uh, this huge gathering of, uh, enemies, and once I made my way through, I, uh, I ran into this group of, I guess, uh, I don't know how to classify you guys, but you didn't seem like the enemy. And, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll find out, uh, if our, I guess our goals align. It seems at the moment they do, so I guess I'll, I'll stick with you guys. It seems like the best option at the moment. Well, uh, shit, that's good enough for me, I guess. Uh, all the hands we can get to help out in crushing this goddamn code the better um that weapon though it uh oh this here is a gun blade yeah she's my baby um, <laughs> gun blade um, you say does it does it fire actual bullets or is it more ether based and as he says oh. that you can you can see him Picking apart the weapon with his eyes as he's very clearly not looking at you making eye contact. <laughs> yeah, so through different <clears throat> through different um, channels I can draw either into uh, either magic or uh, physical attacks. Through my uh, through my gunblade. Well, well, well. 
That is so interesting. I wonder what psychopath that wasn't me came up with that. And oh. as he is speaking aloud, he takes out a small pocketbook and he is very intently staring at your weapon and seemingly it looks like he's taking notes drawing something on it to possibly attempt to recreate on his own at a later point in time but the longer he begins to sketch you hear a very loud cough <coughs> Zero, now is not the time for further weapons development as Francesca speaks up he quickly regains his composure over being excited over a new weapon and he's ah <coughs> right sorry about that boss so um this priest what uh what do we do with him as Francesca walks over to him looking at his currently unconscious state she for a moment grabs him by the shirt collar and she looks at him with nothing but malice in her eyes and she is tempted ever so slightly turn him into paste onto the wall but she doesn't as she knows that there is very useful information that she can acquire from him and thus she puts him down and she turns to Rosalia and she asks her so, would you like to inform us about what priests do in the cult that you used to be a part of? And please roll a charisma save to see if you too are affected by uh, Francesca's overwhelming aura of intimidation at the moment. Mm. Because she is. You said what? Charisma. Charisma save. Because she is very, very upset. Oh dear. All right, Mel, you just barely passed. I will roll for Dreva. <gasps> Excuse me. What did you get? Ah, she failed. All right. So she kind of kind of steps backwards a little bit uh, when she lays eyes on Francesca. And uh, Rosalia responds with, well, um, priests such as him, they're, if I remember correctly, if they hadn't changed anything, there are different tiers of them. So the lowest of the bunch are priests, which is what his rank is. Going past priests are cardinals, and then going past a cardinal is what they call a, a shit. What did they call them again? Uh, um, uh, uh, a seeress. That's what they called them. Seeresses. Regardless if they were a man or woman, they were officially dubbed the Sirius. If they had done things like luring more people in to join the cause, um, progressing deeper and deeper into the dark arts of the arcane, and if they were willing to acquire sacrifices so they can resurrect that demon I told you all about. And among all that, there is a high council that oversees everything, and essentially, to be part of the high council, you more or less have to not have a soul, essentially. No empathy, uh -huh. no emotion, borderline demonic like thought processes and wholly and entirely 
be ready to give your life at a moment's notice for the supposed benefit to humanity, as they would very often proclaim. And this bastard over here, that you all have strangely managed to bring back, because these guys are typically stronger than your average um, arts user, so to say. Oh, uh, where I come from, I call arts... I use arts and magic interchangeably, don't mind that. But, um, yeah, that's that's what they do. And that's their ranking system. As far as I remember, they could have changed it in the time that I've been gone, but um, it, it makes me uncomfortable to think about and discuss, but in accordance of bringing them down, I will become as uncomfortable as I have to. And once Rosalia finishes giving her explanation, Francesca flicks her wrists in the air a couple of times, and Cynthia very quickly sprints over and casts a magical seal on him. That way he cannot run, he cannot escape, and he, as long as the seal is active, cannot cast any form of magic. And when she Wait, what's going on? What do you mean? She just finished. I mean, like, sorry, she finished mm -hmm. explaining um how dangerous. Oh, like she cast a magical uh, barrier on the priest. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I thought she did it on somebody else, and I'm like, wait, hold on, did I miss out on something? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, that now, <clears throat> Zero, Zero speaks up. Now, as much as <clears throat> I would love to, well, send you all back out on the field to procure more data for us, uh, you all, whether you want to admit it or not, look wildly exhausted. Because, well, you all have been up, and by you all I mean the Red Eyes, Yashua, and Fire Psycho over there. You all have been running around since, well, about noon, and it's been quite some time since then it's zero brings up his wrist yeah it's almost midnight and you guys have been running crazy to the bone you all need to take a break and relax for a bit and as zero says that he he steps out of the room for a second to seemingly take a phone call and cynthia speaks up with food in their mouth. Yeah, um, you guys look a little hungry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make yourself, let me make you guys something to eat. Um, I'll be right back. Uh, take a seat, because I promise you, the moment you sit down, you, you're, you're gonna feel it. You are going to feel it. With that, Cynthia steps out of the room to prepare a meal for you all. And, Drava, she puts her staff away, and she just doesn't even bother walking over to the table, and just drops down right where she's standing. Holy God, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was really trying to ignore it, but I am really, really tired. Uh, I'm, um, I'm gonna take a load off here, because I really don't have the strength to move anymore. And, with that being said, the adrenaline from the course of the day's events is starting to fade away. And, as Zeril and Cynthia pointed out to you all, you all do feel 
very exhausted. Oh dear. Yep. That being said. Well, it has been a long ass fucking night, so. We're shadowing. Where are we sleeping? Uh, Drava. She speaks up and says, Oh, uh, Frankie. Uh, put us up in a hotel room for as long as we're here, so we we stay there while we're still here in the city helping out. Um, I'm not walking over there though. I'm, I, no, I'm tired. I I want to eat and sit down for a bit before I go over there. Ooh. And if if you don't mind, uh. There is, uh, a, a, a something I wish to discuss with you again, Mel. Oh. And as she says that, she visibly twitches. Are you good there, Dreyfa? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not at the moment. We can talk oh, about we... that later, though. Oh, okay, okay. We will talk about it later, though. Now, um, could you help me sit on the table so I can eat? I get, he well, a human and not like an animal, please? Oh, yes. Do you want me to, like, put you on the chair, or can you do that for yourself? Just sit me in a chair, please. I got you. I can't move her character. <laughs> okay. So now... Things have calmed down for the time being. And... Cynthia... Eventually comes back to the... To the office space. With... A very, very large... Tray of food. You see things like you see seafood you see various different meat dishes vegetable dishes there's even well strangely there's half of a pie where there should be a whole one and any of you can roll perception Okay, Drava and Mel both look at Cynthia's face, and you can see just a corner of pie filling hanging off of her mouth. Oh. Oh, Cynthia, you got a little something on your mouth. What are you talking about? She puts her hand to her mouth. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, you weren't supposed to notice that, but hell, well, cat's out of the bag now. God damn it, I made another cat joke. Mm. Oh. Are you and interested in cats or anything? I I mean I'm I am a cat demi human. Yeah, that Do makes you, sense. You not, that makes sense. Have you never yeah, noticed I mean, my ears and tail until Actually I mean, don't don't answer that. Do not don't mm -hmm. Okay, no, I, okay, got it, got it. Yep. Mm. The last thing I need is huh, Blondie coming in here and making cat jokes again, huh? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Now look who set themselves up. God. Ugh, God damn it. Oh. Anyway, um. Yeah, I. Well, you you know that I. I have a reason as to why I never stop eating. And, uh, Cynthia looks over, so, um, you ever gonna take the, the mouth part of your cloak down so you can, you know, eat and, you know, maybe have a, a regular conversation and, you know, stop hiding behind your, your really cool cloak thing? I, uh, I eat when I need to. 
Huh? Fair enough. And at least you have a, a choice whether you want to eat or not. <clears throat> so as you all eat, Francesca is having a conversation with Rosalia over <clears throat> in the corner of the office. And she looks up at the time and she does a very quick hand clap and you hear on the overhead speakers it's opening time and immediately after hearing that hundreds upon well, <clears throat> hundreds upon hundreds of people start flooding in to the public area of Francesca's nightclub and begin dancing their hearts away as if nothing has happened that was in any way stressful earlier in the day. And you can all hear the music outside. You can, through the one-way windows, see everyone having a, a good old time with themselves and other people. You can see drinks flying around. You can see food being passed out. You can see people getting a little bit too rowdy, but all in all, you see people having fun. Open party. Honestly, this is so good after whatever the fuck we've been through. Ah, too many cults remind me of reminds me of that one hit. Anyway, Dreva, so what did you want to talk about? Or do you mean later, later? Uh, hang on. Um. So we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna backtrack a couple of words. Oh, pardon. Remind you of a what exactly? Uh. Can I like stealth away? Um, no, you may not. Mom! As she presses the question, they have those where you come from? Hmm? Okay, first of all, I said, hey, what makes you wake? Okay, no, no, I'm gonna backtrack this again. What do you mean they have those where you are? What as, are you referring she, to? She puts a really smug grin on her face and rests her hand on her, <clears throat> rests her chin on her hand. Mel, I'm not stupid. I know what you were talking about. Listen, bitch. I didn't say the bitch part. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, yes, we have hentai. And what of it? <laughs> That's all I wanted you wanted you to admit to. No big deal. Listen, why do you watch hentai, Dreva? Hmm? <laughs> do you know what hentai I'm referring to? That is a question that will be answered not in public. Oh. As she takes another spoonful of food and crams it in her mouth. Wes, well, didn't you tell? Didn't you say you want me? You want me? Blah, blah, blah. You wanted me to teach you how to eat. How to eat? Huh? I'm fucking imagining things. Why would I need you to teach me how to eat? I actually teach me how to fight, not eat. Well, Holy fight shit, like you imagine. specifically, but not eat. I can do that by myself. It really was a long day, Drake. It was a long day. <laughs> I'm gonna just show food in my mouth at this point. <laughs> Zero and Cynthia. So many times. <laughs> Zero and Cynthia look at the both of you and they laugh. I look at them it's like, hey, don't mock me. I've been through a lot. <laughs> I was almost part of a cult, I'll have you guys know. It was not pretty. Mm-hmm. Reminded me of church. <laughs> ah, well. To each their own, I suppose. So, <clears throat> new guy. Uh, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna keep pressing you for questions because, well... I don't know where you got your gear from, but 
it looks really well put together. And uh, you say you're from this region, right? And you had a you had a vision. So I take it you've never been on this part of the continent before. If you had to say it is region. Well, you know, ever since I escaped, I mean, um, ever since I arrived here, I, uh, I found this armor from, we'll call him a, a kind gentleman. And, uh, I just... All I had to my name was my blade, and, uh, I guess what you see, but, um, yeah, I've, uh, I've just been making it my mission to, uh, to get back at, or, uh, you know, uh, stop this from happening, like, this, uh, this cult from, from harming anyone else. <clears throat> well, not gonna fault you for that one. That's, uh. Well, for lack of a better description, that's, uh, it's a pretty badass reason for just joining a random ass fight against what appears to be a cult, so. Good on you! You, uh, you seem like you're gonna be a real good ally for these guys. And, well,. This district in general, I should say. Yeah, I wanna don't wanna pull any punches and withhold. Well, I don't wanna withhold information that shouldn't be withheld. You, you get me? <clears throat> and as Zero says that, Cynthia very audibly scoffs in his direction, and he scoffs back at her. Uh, I'm gonna, before you guys leave, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll put in a notice to the hotel, tell them to open up another room for you, and, uh, well, seeing as, as Chief is out there dancing a hard away because, well, she's been dealing with shit all day, this included, and, uh, as she said several times before, oh, even politicians, they need a break too. As you take a peek out of the window, and you can see her bussing moves, moving from person I'm to person, person, and just having a good time out there. And Cynthia says to herself, it's still, even though I've known Frankie for like, damn near 20 years, it still baffles me. How an eight foot tall woman can dance like that. It's insane. Anyway. So, um are you guys done eating? As she points at the at the tray of food she brought out. And when you do that, you look at her hand, you look at her, you look at the six plates sitting in front of her. Yeah. And you I mean, may have whatever response you wish to have. Would you like us to order you another plate? On us, of course. Well, I mean, if you want to, I'm not gonna say no. Cynthia, what? You know better. <laughs> <laughs> I slide the menu towards her. A woman who can eat. Damn it, Blondie, you know why I have to eat. God damn, leave me alone. You have a bag of chips in your pocket. Eat that. But. But. Cat. Stop. <sighs> Bastard. This. Oh. Cynthia pushes the menu away begrudgingly and takes the bag of chips out of her pocket and starts eating it. Nom nom. And so Drava speaks up. Um, 
Uh, if I may, why do you eat so much? Uh, I don't. I don't want to be uh, uh, rude or anything. I just, well, you haven't stopped eating since we met you. <laughs> As Cynthia stops crunching on her chips and says, <laughs> "Well, um." How much longer do you want to stay up? Because, uh... It, it, it's quite the explanation. Oh. Um. Uh. Drava is at a loss for words. As the, as the question of how long do you want to stay up was extended to everyone and not just Drava. So, um, let's see. I mean, after having this large meal, I kind of am getting quite sleepy. I'd like to... I'd like to be sure that someone's watching this, uh, this priest, if we're all gonna be... I guess, incapacitated for the night. Well, uh, don't you worry about that. I've got, well, you all can't see them. I, I, I can. I've got seven different drones in this room keeping watch on that bastard and Rosalia. Rosalia because, you know, Chief's orders, but you know, definitely him because they're the priest. So, don't you worry about a thing. We've got eyes on them. Plus, we've also got security uh we got extra security i should clarify in here for the night waiting for the son of a bitch to wake back up so we, we've got eyes we've got eyes guess that works for me yeah yeah sounds good that way i can sleep without stress all right well I'm gonna take that as you all are ready to hit the hay and get some sleep because well we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow so we're gonna want you guys at your best just in case some other wild shit happens you know uh, Z do you mind um, getting over to the hotel I've got some upkeep to do yeah yeah just uh just make sure you don't run yourself ragged again like you normally do that's hilarious coming from the workaholic in the room huh all right fuck you cat get out leave as those two have their <clears throat> their typical interactions with each other and Cynthia guides you all out of the nightclub. Uh, Drava waves goodbye to Francesca as Francesca waves back to you all. And we will now move locations over to the hotel. I'm just gonna mention for future references. No, like, I'm talking to, like, uh, Drava uh -huh. Just randomly saying, Damn, can't believe I can't believe Yoshio ate so much he fucking passed out. Just like straight up in the middle of the party. Crazy. <laughs> that dude made so many plates disappear. I I've never seen a man eat so quick. <laughs> well, uh, knowing Yoshua is doing okay. Yeah, he, uh. Yoshua yeah, sure can eat. If, um. Well, the last time I've seen, the, seen him eat anything to go by, uh, he he's like a stage below a black hole almost. Yeah. And very true. As you all <clears throat> make your way inside of the hotel, Cynthia looks over to the front desk. She grabs a phone. She sends a text message and. She turns right back around to the door and she says, uh, 
Well, I'm gonna get on and go. I'll see you all in the morning. Wait a minute. What? Did Raven not want to speak to me? Oh, she will. Oh, not now? I mean, you all aren't in your rooms yet. True, true, true. Okay, I, I Draver as she's walking away. Alright, so Draver's room is over yonder. Uh, Henry's room was here. Uh, place your... I got the one with the bathtub. They uh, all have bathtubs. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry about it. I want this one. Wait. Where is this one? I'm trying my best. There we go. Okay. So, as you all are settling into your rooms for the night, Mel. Wait, no, I want this one. Okay. <laughs> Click all the way up there. Let's go. <laughs> Mel, you receive a text message on your tombstone from Drava asking you to come to her room. What does the notification sound like? Uh, do you know the limit break charge meter charge sound from 14? Like that? Yep. Nice. Okay. I respect the drip. That's weird. I got a text the second you sent that. <laughs> You're gonna fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I right. I look at my phone and just raise one eyebrow and just start walking outside. Very sneakily. I use stealth. Can I roll stealth? Uh, <laughs> sure. Just for dramatic effect. Yeah. If I fail it, can I just like start smacking walls and shit? <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to fail, but okay. <laughs> All right, so drops my armor. All right, so you rolled it to a ten. So let's say that you. At this point, I'm just walking like a normal pace. Yeah, you think you're walking uh, at a slightly quieter pace, but you forgot to take your shoes off, and your shoes are making a little click clack noise. Okay, it's hotter. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you open the door, and you see Drake. Hey, what's good? I- oh my god. I did not say that. Okay, thanks. Or I could have, to be fair. <laughs> uh, so... No, I won't. You see Drava doing some maintenance on her weapon, looking over all of her stuff, and she notices that you entered the room. And she speaks, oh, hey, um, so, about that thing, uh, so, remember when I officially agreed to join you guys and do the whole adventuring thing again? Um... Yes. My... Uh, the, the other side of me... Um... Mm, I don't really know how to... Say this... Um... She, she's really trying to keep her composure about it, and I would like you to roll. Please do an intelligence safe roll. Okay. Now roll history. Okay. So. By passing that, you clue in to that when she says the other side, you remember that she told you that she is half a vampire. Vampire. And you also infer that by the way how of how physically uncomfortable she is at the moment. You also inquire that she is in need of 
drawing from you. She's a bit thirsty. Oh. <laughs> She's a little bit thirsty. <laughs> I slowly walk towards her, and that whilst I'm walking, I ask her, is like, the other side of yourself, do you mean your vampire self? <sighs> yeah. I, uh... I almost lost it when we were fighting earlier, and I, uh... I split that guy down the middle, and I didn't throw the blood off my weapon. That, uh... I would not have been very ladylike. Or, um, very smart to do in the middle of a fight. Oh. I mean, maybe not by the looks of it. Our new member would have looked at you a bit awkwardly. <laughs> yeah. I chuckled to try and, like, lighten the moods. <laughs> um, so... If... By now, I'm, like, right next to her, right? Because I want to interrupt what you're saying next by lifting my arm towards her mouth instead. Okay. Uh, and then I just say, don't worry, I already know Draven. And she looks, she looks at your, <clears throat> she looks at your wrist, she looks at you, she looks back at your wrist, and she sinks the fangs right in. Now. I moan. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. Oh, damn, we're getting moan. into erotica, bro. <laughs> now, let's see here. Okay. So, with that roll, she... She does not indulge herself too much out of a matter of respect. And when she finishes... She she very quickly takes a napkin, cleans the mouth off, she reseals the wound, and she says, uh, thanks. Thanks a bunch. And I'm, I'm so, so sorry that you have to deal with this for me. My character kind of looks like she's ignoring her and just looking at her wrist. And then I, so I then I say to myself like, "Huh, I think I could get used to this." Uh, huh? Hmm. What do you mean you could get used to? Huh? I mean, I hope you know this is going to be annual, right? I mean, I mean, Dreva, you trusted me with your secret. The least I can do is try to assist you and help. Okay, that is entirely fair. Um, I guess uh, all the stuff I've read about people being in total fear of vampires isn't very true now, huh? You know, I mean, depending on who you're talking to, because, you know, you'll always find those bitches that are, like, a bit insane in the membrane, but... Not all. And I assure you, the rest of our team wouldn't take any second guesses to try and distrust you because of it. Yeah, that that's fair. Though, still, for the time being, I don't really intend on any of them knowing. Um, but as long as, I... you know, this can stay between us and this... This thing happens every couple of days uh should be okay i place my hand on her shoulder and i say don't worry everything is safe here and she lets out a very very heavy sigh oh <sighs> thanks a bunch and as you do that just before you exit the room, a very, very strong gust of black smoke emerges from your chest. And it very quickly fills the room, and then it coalesces into a single spot. And when the, s 
when the smoke dissipates entirely, the creature within the smoke just so happens to be good old Garland. So get the token well. on the map. Um <clears throat> I why am I here? What is the meaning of the you with the blade? Hello. Who are you? Who are you? And what could you possibly be doing with my granddaughter? Me? Nothing negative of the sort. Why, sir? Um, well, for that, I do not have an explanation. Um, the last time what? this happened, it, it happened when, I suppose, a moment of determination and solidarity was had. Because I remember speaking to one of your teammates, albeit it wasn't very long, but for what we did discuss, I I felt that I could, for the first time in a long time, trust someone. Um, oh. Did your teammates let you know that this was my granddaughter? And before you respond, Drava walks up to Garland and she says, So, you're actually my several times over great grandfather? And Garland looks back at her, Ah, this is, um, this is what people would call awkward uh yes i am your grandfather the the, the legendary or well i suppose i was in uh, history books for a time being i am garland master of war master of combat and well your friends managed to defeat albeit a resurrected incomplete version of me in the battle and when I passed along my power to them what I thought was me returning to the ether I somehow managed to become intrinsically linked via the soul with them but I as for these sudden summonings and I, I don't, I do not have an explanation for that. Because I did not master magical, arcane things. I just grew my strength by whatever means necessary. You ruined my moment, Garland, so. <laughs> uh, what moment? Don't worry about it. Anyway. Through his helmet, you can see Garland squinting his eyes at you. I'm as... squinting. Riku, I'm actually squinting my eyes in real life, just looking at his character, like, mm. like I squint back. Like, the, the yellow glow where his eyes are, you can see them shrink just a little bit. Can I, can I squint back at him? Uh, sure. I squint back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when he... Amidst the squinting contest... You can see Garland begin to flicker uh, in and out of existence yet again. As he says, well, it, it appears my my time is up again. And Drava, oh she speaks up and she says, well, at least I got to actually have a small conversation with you. Um... Guess we'll get to know each other over time. 
and Garlin, he, he laughs. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I, I do suppose it is time for us to actually get to know each other instead of me keeping tabs on you over the years. And Drava confused. What do you mean by that? And just before Garland can answer, he disappears yet again. Oh dear. Well. Well, and of course, it's really well. <laughs> and I think you know that you have a grandfather. I. I. I suppose so, but well, f for now, I don't. I really don't see the resemblance. I mean, neither do I. You're, you know, cute little thing compared to. Uh... Why? Uh, are you? Yeah. Wait, why? Why do you? Why do you? Why, what is flattering me gonna do for you? Stop it! What? Nothing. Uh, why can't I flatter you? I didn't I'm ask. just saying the truth, to be fair. This isn't flattering. I didn't ask to be flattered, <laughs> damn it. Well, <laughs> I'm sad to tell you this, Driver, but you won't be asking. I'm just gonna keep doing it. <sighs> Fine, yeah, whatever. Anyway. I look at and smile. <laughs> and she... She gives you a really sarcastic grin back, making sure to show her fangs at you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm laughing in character as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I look around and I'm like, you see, that's why I call you cute. That's why I call you cute. Go to sleep already. Get out of my room. Uh, okay. I was gonna say make me, but like CD, I already made fun of her enough to do. Okay. Good night, Drava. Drava flips you off as she uses a windspur to close the door. <laughs> I just scream rude and walk towards my door. Okay. So, with that interaction out of the way, you all do go to sleep for the night, and upon sleeping, any status, any status ailments you are suffering from are gone, any levels of exhaustion you have are gone, you are back at full HP, full MP, and full special resources that are applied to your character. Ooh. So, as the night goes by, you all wake up at around, around 10, 10.30 a.m. You all handle your morning routine, your hygiene, etc. Take a good shower, double check all your gear. And before long, all of you will convene at the entrance to the hotel. One morning. Who are you saying one morning to? Oh, to be fair, it was myself. Ah. Okay, okay now, well, technically, okay, now that I'm next to Drava. Good morning, Drava. Drava is fiddling away at her tombstone. Oh, morning. Uh, how'd you, how'd you rest? Pretty well. How did you sleep? Uh, well, better than what I could have had, you know, it not happened. I'm glad that it helped out. Yep. And also, Draper, you don't need to hesitate in asking me for more, by the way. 
I just want to make sure that you're okay first. Yeah, but it it still makes me really uncomfortable. You know this. Mm-hmm, I know. Alright, so we just gotta wait for Lion and then we can get going with whatever else we have to do for today. Oh, here he comes right now. Hey, how'd you, how'd you rest? Good, I heard someone slamming doors last night. Uh, oh. Aside from that, you know, not a big deal. Yeah. I blame Gravo. Shut up! Oh, that's rude. Uh, blaming me for shit, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Blair looking at us. You know, I'm just gonna assume it's not my business. <laughs> well, everyone here and accounted for. Let's make our way back over to the office. And just just as you all leave, you happen to hear from the outside uh something that you well at least Mel has heard once before. <gasps> Excuse me. And uh, it it is not a not a very good reminder. Um, I know I'm not the only person that hears that, right? Uh, no, 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 you are not. Um... I really think we should very quickly make our way over to the office, because I, I... I don't like warning noises. Yeah, it seems about right as I, cont as I walk towards the office. So, you walk, and Dravo breaks out into a full-on sprint, and as you all find your way outside, um, the scene is not good. You can see things on fire, you can oh, see various explosions happening of very different colors, might I add. And you can see a lot of people running for dear life. It's the fucking apocalypse. And as you all are maneuvering your way through the people, you happen across <clears throat> you happen across Cynthia, who is also sprinting over to the hotel to come get you guys. Guys, there's no time to explain. Shit has gone. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Okay? We need to go right now. Okay, but go. Go where? Follow me. As I move the map again. In the distance, you can see. Oh, um, please place your tokens over in the bottom right corner. Okay, put that there. I will put this one uh, right here. If it will come onto the damn map. Hang on. There we go. Alright, so, um, in the distance you can see a lot of fighting going on in all sides. You see some innocent civilians fighting for their lives. You see those who appear to be of the cult fighting for their lives. And you can also see, well, to Mel and Dreva, they can see Regis from the hospital. Uh, doing battle with quite a few individuals. As you look over and 
Cynthia tells you that uh, the cult decided that they weren't gonna waste any more time, I guess, and they just started randomly attacking people all over the city. And we've got all hands on deck getting all the help that we can, but we're we're starting to run a little short staff, so um I need you guys to just one go help Regis and two where wherever there's trouble I need you all to help deal with it because Zeril and I our our hands are really, really tied up right now. And again well, we Okay, say less. When you look over it's to Regis, you can see him surrounded by several different um demonic creatures to put it lightly to put it very lightly mr At, sir that's lightly <laughs> and um he he cuts another one of them down and he looks over to you and says hey um help now yeah okay um <laughs> I'm gonna just walk towards them. Okay. Now I'm going to stop this and I will play. Is this the right one? It's not the right one. It's not that one either. Where is it? And I'll put it in here. Here it is. Okay. So, at Cynthia's beck and call and Regis being in need of help, you all join the fight with him. For this one fight, he will be a temporary ally. Now, Mel, nice. I do believe you have the highest speed out of the group, so I think you'll be going first. What is your speed set again? What? Uh... Actually, yeah. What what what's both of your speed stats? My speed's one fifty. Okay, you have one fifty. Mine's one thirty six, so definitely hers. Okay, so Dravel will actually be going first one because one she has one fifty five. Slut. Oh lordy. <laughs> I remember this. Yeah. And after after Dravo will be Regis, because he has one fifty three. All right, so. Wasting no time, Drava borderline snatches her staff off of her back. She does a does a quick spin in place, and she fires off a ruin at the serpent in the upper left corner from where Reese is standing. And after she fires off the ruin spell. She will use her next four actions to increase her magic power. She will cast Patera on Regis. And then she will cast Shelra on Regis. Regis. She will look over to the lion and she says, Alright, let's see what you're made of. We aren't just randomly joining a fight. She casts Temper on Lion. And she uses her last action to heal Regis for any damage he might have already taken. And for this, I will also display Regis's health bar for you all. Make sure you all can see that. Okay. So, <clears throat> we just, a as he is taking his attack at the amalgamation of eyes and hands floating in front of him, he will exclaim that, yeah, that, <clears throat> that little bastard that you all saved and took as a hostage uh, yesterday evening as I was <coughs> god damn it 
as I was tending to his injuries that were much worse than what they actually were, he began talking complete and utter nonsense. And <clears throat> before I could put a stop to it, he unfortunately transformed into this grotesque and disgusting creature and went on a rampage. I tried to stop him, but he got too far away from me before I could do anything because Isla and Iris were in trouble. They're still at the hospital fighting for their lives as we speak. Oh dear. And because Regis is a temporary ally, he only gets one attack, so he attacked this creature right here for 682 damage. And now, Mel, it is your turn. Alright, motherfuckers. Get ready to get hit by the sexy combo to increase my fucking damage by 15. <laughs> the I'm attacking the one in front of me. So it'll be one dragon slice. Whop. Then. You're attacking this, the wait, imp? Was it there? Wait. Yes, okay. Now. Yeah, it's the imp. Okay. Did it die? Tell me when it died, so I don't need to keep using dragon slice. No, why would Two. I do that? <laughs> dragon slice. I would do that to me. Whatever, fuck it. Two dragon slice. Alright. Three dragon slice. Four dragon slice. Because you really are or not. Actually I'm gonna keep it at that because my attack right now is six 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 and I find that satisfying. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop attacking him and assume he's dead. Uh it is not dead. Motherfucker! But you did manage to cut one of its wings in half. I'll well, to be fair, I I'll, still have one more move left. I'll give you that much, okay? Dragon slice, bitch! And now it's no longer six, six, six. Piss. Okay. So. It's it's still not dead, but you borderline half healthed it. Nice. Alright. This imp is stronger than I expected. Lion, it is your turn. Alright. Okay. I will Put a little buff icon by your name so I know it's active. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you this one. My apologies, one second. It's all good. He's. I'm gonna. Like, how far is. Uh... The distance between me and Mel. Between you and Mel? Yeah. That is... Oh, okay. 25 feet. Alright. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was gonna attack the thing in front of her, but if, if it's not, uh... Like an imminent threat, I guess. Um... I could probably attack the one in front of me then, right? Yeah. Okay. I cast a. Uh... Yeah, lightning shot on this guy. Alright. And. How many attacks do you get per turn? Or how many. Sorry. Five actions per turn. Sweet. up. Oh, I accidentally zoomed out. That's okay. Nice 
Okay, let's see here real quick. <clears throat> Alright, the enemy in front of you has lost a significant amount of health. They have lost several appendages. And they are just barely keeping themselves uh, stable. Alright, and then for my last one. I'll use that on the guy in the center. Okay. Let me just grab my my uh where is it? Here it is. And it spawns. Okay. Let me put uh Little barrier icon on him. Alright, cool. It's a um I don't know why my follow notification noise just went off. Um That was strange. Anyway. So, continuing on, it is now the enemy phase, and this serpent in the upper left corner, it is going to cast a uh, Blizzard 3 being, being Bazaga, and it is going to use Drava as a point of origin, but... For all else, it will have to roll to see if it hits. So I'm gonna do 1D, 3, 2. That's about to hurt. Alright. Blizzard spell is hitting Drava. At wait. And because it is being used as an AoE, uh, Leon and Mel, you two will be being hit by it as well. No. Yes. I refuse. I will use a move to counter this. You cannot counter magic with your counter attack. Fine, I'm over it. Okay. Now, again, because of how AoEs work, uh, if you are being affected by an AoE and not the main target of the attack, mm -hmm. please subtract your speed stat from the 456. And that will be the damage that you take. Oh, God. Owie. Uh oh, that's the wrong number, Jesus. Okay. And just for uh, transparency's sake, I will put Drava's. Uh, I will, I'll make her HP bar displayable for you all. That is the wrong number again. Alright. And so. With its next action, the serp—it's still the serpent's turn. With its next action, it is going to cast. It's going to cast Blizzard above its head, but it's also going to cast Fire, and thus douse itself in water. So those are three actions out of five. So then, with its fourth and fifth action. It will slither next to, well, it will 
it will use its movement action to sprint. And by split by sprint, I mean it's just gonna slither along the ground really fast. Uh, over to the center, in between uh, Mel, Drava, and Leon. I mean Lion. And it will attack itself with Thundaga as it splashes water all over the place. I'm going to ask you all for a... Give me an acrobatics roll to dodge the water being flung everywhere. Hmm. Real count. Oh, my thing crashed. Hold on. Take time. Three. Three nine. Wait, what am I rolling? You are rolling acrobatics. acrobatics. To dodge the water being flung at you. Whoosh. Okay. Man has performed the fucking round off. You both have dodged the water. Okay, Draven has dodged the water, so none of you have become wet. And therefore, you will not be taking extra damage from the <clears throat> from the lightning spell. I don't want to be pony anymore. I want to be happy. Anyway. Oh. And as for the attack itself, because it is using itself. As the point of origin, it did not have to roll to hit either of you, but uh, is being used as an AOE. So regardless, uh, you all will be taking damage. I can't use my counter, can I? Since it's an AOE. Hmm. Actually, your counter does let you use it against magic, right? Uh, physical, magical, or ranged. Hey, if you want to use it, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. Well, I mean, I will stop you if it's not under the right conditions, but if it meets the conditions, hey, go for it. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to do this. That. Okay, so because you have used your counter, uh, regardless, you will be getting hit by the attack, but uh, after you subtract your speed stat from this, uh, tell me what the number is and that will be, and half of that will go back to the serpent. Why am I taking so much damage, bro? I'm gonna fucking die. Uh, 166.5 is half. Okay. So we'll just say 167 or so. Half that is. Okay, so with the serpent using itself as a conduit to try and harm you, because of your counter, it has died. So that is one enemy down. And as for the as for the eyes and the imp, the eyes will float over to each other and combine into one, and thus extending its lifespan by quite a bit. So the one in the lower left to reach us fades away. And the one that is above him grows in size. Devilry. And as for the imp, it will attempt to ram into. Uh, <clears throat> it will attempt to ram into Mel. This is being considered a Don't melee you. attack, but. I would also have you roll uh, athletics to dodge out of the way. If you want to. Alright. So you dodge the attack. Now, I will allow you 
an opportunity to attack it as you are moving. Oh my god, that is the sexiest thing you have ever told me, Riku. <laughs> anyway. I'm gonna fucking prison katana this motherfucker. Like a razzle dazzle hun, dude. Alright. I am 100% razzle dazzling this. So as, as you dodge out of the way, you strike it with prism katana. And you deal 246 damage to it. Four, and as you strike it, you strike the wing that you cut in half earlier. <gasps> Excuse me. And you cause it, you cause it to fall to the ground. So, so what I guess for being a little fucking narc. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little piss boy. Alright, so it is now once again uh Drava's turn. As she will She is going to focus her sights on the larger enemy, but before she does any of that, she is once again going to cast cure on Regis because he still looks like he's hurting and that is not where I meant to put that graphic hold on uh, above Regis's head you can see a small ring of light spin above him and thus he is now back at full HP And after she casts Cure, the light fades away, and she refocuses her sights <clears throat> on the now larger enemy, and she will begin her next set of attacks, starting with Ember, and I will do... Okay, the enemy is not on fire but it has been scorched pretty bad and she will then choose to plant her staff in the ground she is going to fire a roga and that is a crit holy god um all right that's one two three actions so let me do seven plus Okay, so her Eroga did 933 damage, and that on top of her casting Ember comes out to. Uh, wait, hold on, my calculator screwed up. Your calculator at the door? Two plus four. Wait, I know what I did wrong. Hang on. Okay, so with her initial series of attacks, with with her two attacks, she has done one thousand eighty-two damage to the large disgusting eye creature and as she plants her staff into the ground she looks back at you all and she says I hope you guys have earplugs as you can see small sparkles and traces of magic flowing from under her feet as she lets out a mighty, mighty roar. Now, please do an intelligence save. Wop. Intelligence save. So I saved. I did saving and intelligence as well. 
Okay, so... Mel, you pass. I did not. Oh, Ryan, no, no, no. you unfortunately no, no, no. did not. No, no, no. I'm literally oh, about to die. <laughs> so... Miss Keisha! Miss Keisha! Okay, so regardless, you're getting hurt from this. This is an, this is an AoE sound-based attack. So, um... Let's see here. Lion, you will be taking... Unfortunately... 599 points of damage. Oh, Christ. And Mel, oh, and line. Well, you don't have MP to lose, so that doesn't apply to you. Uh, and Mel, you will be losing 300 HP. I will have issues, Riku. <laughs> However, I die to a fucking imp. However, uh, because the because of how close the imp was to the attack, even though it wasn't the intended target, uh, it took bonus damage from it, and it is dead. And Ew, fucking cunt. Regis is very much so not pleased over having, you know, his ears assaulted like that. But he's glad that something died as a result. And as for the eye creature, it is very much a howling in discomfortable pain. And the big eye in the center uh, strangely inflates. He does what now? The eye in the center of the creature has inflated. Oh, so the, about to explode. the the body of the creature is not has not going to sign. The eye has, and depending on depending on how fast you kill it, it will explode or not. I'll tell you that much. And with that, uh, Dreva has. See, one, one, two, three. Okay, that was four actions. Uh, Drava is going to very quickly apologize for what she just did. And she is going to turn to heal Lion. With her last action being cure. So how much she cured me for? Yep. I'm at full health. <laughs> I was at 37 HP. <laughs> Holy... <laughs> Yeesh! Alright. Yeah. <laughs> that just does full, right? doesn't overheal? Uh, yeah. Just full heal. Okay. I mean, I was sweating. <laughs> 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 Alright, so that Drake's turn is ended. As Regis will quickly turn to the eyeball. He will take heed that it has inflated, and he he will take his blade, he will take a few steps back, and he will throw it as if it is a javelin right at the center of the eye. I like it. And then he will... He will call his weapon back. And once he takes a good look at it, he will immediately... Throw it on the ground, because it is absolutely disgusting. But, as a result, as a result of doing that... The eyeball creature... Falls limp to the ground and fades away into smoke so it is dead 
And this battle has been completed, but you will not gain EXP rewards at the moment. Uh, instead, Regis will... <clears throat> he will unsheath another sword that he is holding on him, and double check his gun just to make sure it is loaded. He says, I am going to go check on the other districts in the area. You all, please, no matter what, get to the hospital and help Isla and Iris because I don't think they can fight that thing much longer while also making sure that the patients aren't injured in any way, shape, or form. Can I trust you all to do that? You got it. Yes, boss! Okay. Regis... Regis kneels down and assumes a position of if he was about to run on a track field and as he sprints away from you, you you can look at where his feet were, and you can see a trail of lightning from where he took off at. As he is not wasting any time getting on to handle the rest of this mess. So Drava, she, uh, she fixes her stance because she was a little hunched over after she did that roar of hers. She, as a precaution, she casts Cure on herself and she casts Cure on Mel. And she looks over to you two and she said, let's, let's go, Lion, follow us. Got some pipes on you. Yeah, well, I, uh, this really isn't the time for that, but I did music on the side for quite a while before I decided to do the adventuring thing again. And, uh, that, <laughs> this, uh, this brooch that I have, that's the only reason why I can scream the way that I just did. Alright. Alright. Mel, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So instead of running over there, she takes a moment to charge up her, her Aroga spell, and she's going to attempt to accelerate it by one stage. It, it, it takes her some time, but... She manages to just barely cast Aroga at its highest potential state. And she uses it to create platforms of wind under your feet as she guides everyone over to the hospital. So, you all make it over, you run inside, and you are immediately greeted by a giant were rat creature engaged in combat with Isla and Iris Nicodemus and as they hear the doors open they look back so oh thank Gaia you guys are here uh hi new guy no time for explanations help us take this thing out and er and Iris speaks up but what about the patients we have to get them out of here too and Isla shouts back in response, but we can't just let them fight this by themselves. Uh, damn it. Oh. Either, either of you can speak up and announce. I guess we have no choice but to kill this thing. Yeah. Pretty much so, to be fair. Aight. Reva, you're up. Okay, so Drava looks over to the both of them and she is going to. What we get? Alright, she attempts to 
persuade to by saying it's okay you can you can get the other patient out of here we can handle this and iris looks back yeah um th i don't i don't think so you're, you're gonna need some kind of help and uh mel please do an insight roll do that twice actually insight yes All right, so you look over at Isla and Iris, and you can see that they are in very, very bad shape. Oh dear. They've been fighting this thing for a while, but they look like they can barely stand. Okay. Can I rush to their, like, assistance to make sure that they can, like, back away so I can fight it instead? Or, like, we? I mean... Uh... Mm -hmm. You may roll Persuasion to, again, try to convince them that you all can handle it and that they can get everybody out of there. All is right. that a pass? Yes, that is a pass. What a god. Oh my god! I I uh, wave my sword and like above me is like guys, I think we got it from here. You guys look in really 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 bad shape. Please let us handle it. We don't want you to get hurt anymore. You know, Isla, they're right because <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> uh, as. Iris coughs. She hacks up a very concerning amount of blood. Oh dear. And she says, what would what would Regis say if he saw us like this, you know? <clears throat> Damn it. Fine. Okay. We're going. But, you guys, you better make it out of this alive, okay? Because there's other people that need your help. Yeah, yeah, we're just worried about you surviving at the moment. I don't want to ruin my yeah. wreck. <laughs> ruin my wreck. Okay. Alright. Let's get these presents. And let's get out of here. So. They leave the battle. And you all. Take their positions of where they were standing. And the closer you get, the more. The more broken equipment broken walls small patches of fire that you can see in the immediate area as you don't have the time to go inspect any of the other areas around you we'll change our battle music in uno momentio uh, not that one I'll play let's see here what am I feeling like here we go. I like these icons, they're really cool. Yeah. Okay, so battle has resumed once again. Uh, Dreva is slightly exhausted from using her Dragon Roar spell, so she will not be going first for this turn. Mel, you will be going first this time. Ah, my dragon slice is still active. So, uh, I can do sexy, sexy things. Please tell me it's still active, because CBA. Come on, please. Come on, please, man. Poker. I'll do it again. <laughs> you, will not ha you will not have that problem once I implement the uh, new edits to all the skill trees. Hopefully, it will be done by tonight, if not tomorrow. But so for, nice so for this one last session, you will not have to worry about your Two. attack bonuses constantly resetting in between fights. Three. Ooh! A oh crit! My God. Yeah, baby. Four. I think I messed up. Five, no? six, one. seven. I messed. One, two, three, four. No, one. Yeah, one, two, three, 
four. Okay. Yeah, you did four dragon slices. Never. Sorry, I got lost in the sauce. That's okay. Okay, so we're gonna do the crit first. So that's. Let's see. That last one was so close to a crit too. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I do one, two. Whoops, that's the wrong number. That's eight plus eight. Okay, so now I'm gonna add all the other ones together. Okay, so you have dealt. You have dealt 715 damage to this really large rat. Now, uh, in between turns, uh, Lion, your turn is next. However, the rat creature is going to cast. <coughs> excuse me. It is going to cast uh, Protega. I mean, yeah, Protega on itself, and that's its defense will increase by forty percent. And now it is your turn to act. Alright. You got this, Kenny. About to give him the glizzy. <laughs> no, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you... You completely reload your gun blade, alright. And as for the spells you draw, you ow my knee. You draw seven glare spells, and I will copy paste glare for you, just so you can know what it does. So you don't have to pull up the rulebook again. Green Edge Melee? Yeah, I feel like it's Melee in there. Yeah. <laughs> I will use... Okay. And what's the last one? My bad. Okay. Oh, wait, I missed one. Hang on. Okay. Now, amidst your flurry of attacks, I am going I to ask scary. anyway. I am going oh. to ask you to roll intelligence and perception. Intelligence and perception. Uh huh. Damn. All right. One sec. Perception is. Yeah, 
Damn, obviously I don't have intelligence. I can't find it. I'm just kidding. Where is it? Oh, um... On the left side of your sheet, where all uh, the... Uh, yeah, just, just click the name. There you go. Oh, no. Okay, so... As you are attacking, you have the slightest idea, or you have the slightest feeling that every time you strike, it's almost as if you are hitting reinforced glass when you hit when your gun blade makes contact and as for the total damage you have dealt uh, you have done a flat 1000 of damage Bam. done and as so for sorry um brutal shell uh-huh since i get a barrier equal to a quarter of the damage done yeah so I a quarter of shell's damage so probably like yeah so with the uh, no no uh, the the hp part is uh that that's just for the the brutal shell attack not your total uh not your total turn of attacks. So with Blue Shell, you did that's 548, and then an eighth of that is 44. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is 44. Okay. So you heal for 44 HP, and then a fourth of 44 is 11. So you have a a small barrier. You have temporary HP of 11. That's, that's what I was getting at. Word. Okay. Now. Drava. She is still... Quite exhausted from her roaring of a dragon, but she is going to fight through the exhaustion, and in response to the enemy buffing its defenses, she is once again going to cast Patera and Shellra on. She casts them. Um, she casts Patera on all three of you, and she used her last two actions to cast Shellra on Mel and Lion. Now, for the enemy phase, it is going to pull a vial of a of a purple substance out of its robes and it is going to begin to drink it if you would like to interrupt this from happening I'm going to ask you if if you have a spell or a ranged attack I'm going to ask you to roll a 1d15 so you would type uh, slash r what uh, slash r space 1d 15 like that So roll 1d 15 mm -hmm. Oh Okay, so Mel you do not interrupt it from happening Lion because your role succeeded what would you like to do to interrupt the creature from drinking whatever it is it is drinking Dragon I'll hit a player <laughs> Say that again? Yeah, I'll hit him with glare. Alright. So, please type uh, r slash 5d12 plus your magic attack stat. And then afterwards, uh, please lower your draw pool of glares by one. Alright, r slash what again? 5d12 plus your magic attack stat. Uh, 
Uh, Oops, the, I... the slash and the R are, are reversed. But... Man, look at those 11s. Uh, it would have it would it would have been crazy if all three of those were crits, but regardless. So, you swing your weapon in front of you, and you cast glare, and several specters of uh, white light go flying out of your weapon towards the vial, and when they make contact. Uh, the glass breaks, and the shards of whatever the substance was get into the creature's right eye, and then because it is well, now unable to see from said eye, and because speed is related to accuracy, its speed has dropped by 50 points. Let's go, making moves out here. Now then, because it was it was able to consume a a little bit of said substance, it has regained fifteen hundred HP. And for its for its attack, because it tried to because it started drinking the substance. And because it was interrupted, instead of it having five actions to attack with, it will have three. And it will it will begin charging a blizzard spell. But it is going to take quite some time for the spell to go off. So it with its red hand that has now turned blue and its green hand of which the fire around it had dissipated and turned into a staff it will hold it aloft its head and you will begin to see ice-like energy begin to swirl around it very fast and very frequent It is not attacking, it is it is charging a spell. And it is now it will now be Mel's turn again. Salamu alaikum. Okay, you wanna fucking die bitch? Cause I'm ready to yeet your bitchness away. Let's see here. We cast a sexy um fuck I don't know which element is bad versus I cast Libra Okay Will I know which element that is weak to if I cast Libra? Your version of Libra will not tell you that information. Why the fuck? Wait, let me do it. I got this. It's not your turn yet. Damn. Man, I don't want to use Libra anymore. Nah, you already said it's too late. AKA Riku's like, I already, I already started typing, I'm not gonna erase it. You're damn right I did. Also, uh, do feel free to have, you know, in battle eh, in battle banter similar to how it happens in most video games, specifically Final Fantasy X though. Can I look at the boss and go like, hey, you come here often? <laughs> <laughs> so 
such big teeth you have. It's like the rats of Nim all over again. <laughs> I scream across the room, Drapa, you doing okay over there? Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little spent, to be honest. Um, I used way more magic than what I thought I would in our last fight, and until I get used to that, huh, until I used to get doing that roar, it always really tires me out. And I will now make its HP and whatnot uh, visible to you all. Can't see it. Oh. oh, I can see it. That lost that much. Okay, let's see here. It also because of uh, because of it casting Protega on itself, its defense is instead of it being three hundred, it is four twenty. Blaze it. Alright, I cast Blizzard on my sword. Okay. And I prison Katana him three times. One, two. That's not nice for me. <laughs> That's so pissed. Well, you said three times. Did you mean to click it four times? No, my finger fidgeted. I can't cast more than three to be fair, because five moves. Okay. So you have spell bladed your weapon with Man. Blizzard. Messed up my math again. Nine. Okay. So for your damage. The damage total comes out to 782, but instead of it taking damage, it has healed for that much. Why? Blizzard. It's almost like I said the enemy was casting a blizzard spell. I it is weak to fire. I'll just cast that later. Damn, this rat's cold. <laughs> uh, Lion, it is your turn. Alright, let me at him. Alright, let me give you your buff icon again, so that I have a reminder that it's going. Wow! Man, y'all are getting nutty with these crits today. What in the- no way, bro. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How you get two in a row? Hell yeah. One, two, three, four. And then the last thing I'm going to use is, uh, on Mel. Okay. Oh, and since I use, uh, Leaping Strike, I'm going to, I'm probably going to be closer to it, right? Yep. Okay, well, let's add all this up. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, 
Okay, and then we've got... Dealt 1,244 damage to the rat. I also forgot to use Libra. <laughs> oh well. Uh, this one time, if you, if you really want to, I will allow you to retcon Lion's Protection in order to do that. Yeah, instead of Lion's Protection, we'll do that. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't bite me in the ass. I don't want you to die. Okay. Oh boy, the rain has started outside my house. Oh jeez, that's... Okay, well, that's probably going to get picked up in recording, and I can't do shit about it. Oh, I forgot to... Hang on. Okay. Now you know it's weakness. Oh, I just cast lightning on it too. Wait, right? The lightning shot? Light oh, it was lightning off fire. Lightning yeah. shot is a neutral element attack. With the newfound knowledge, Drava is now completely recovered from her state of exhaustion, and she is going to cast her spark spell at the enemy, and she is gonna let <clears throat> let the sparks fly. And she actually says that as she throws her well, not not actually throwing her staff at the enemy, but spinning it around her and letting lightning-based attacks come out of it. One, two, three, four, five. Why get a crit and a crit failure, bro? Come on, man. <laughs> okay. Okay, the enemy has taken, oh wait, uh, adding in bonus damage from elemental weaknesses, the enemy has taken 498, no, 489 points of damage. Okay, so now with the enemy's turn, the blizzard spell that it was charging is going to finish. And upon casting, it is the the air around the enemy is so cold that everything that was wet 
around the enemy freezes solid. And the spell that the enemy has cast is Blizzard 5 being being Blazaza. Blazaza. Oh no. Blazaza. I'm literally about to wipe. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, well, y'all got lucky because of that one that 519 is cut in half. So the damage number comes out to 260. When you subtract your speed from the 260, that will be the damage that you take because Blazaza I... was cast as an AoE. Can I counter or no? Uh, Blazaza is a tier 5 spell. So oh, the counter right. does not apply. Counter. Calculator back up. Nine minus. Uh-oh. Okay, Drava has taken 105 points of damage. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. Now, because the rat creature has spent its entire previous action and its entire turn casting, casting Blazaza, its turn is over, and now the Draven is done being in a state of exhaustion, that also resume normally with her going first. And to start off her next turn... She will strike the target with Ruin. She will use Fire to melt the frozen objects around the target because she believes that the equipment can be salvaged in one way or another. For a third action, she will cast Temper on herself. And for a fourth action, she will cast Temper on a Lion. And then for a fifth action, she will cast Ruin again. But because of Temper, Ruin hits twice. So it is rolled twice. So let's do the math. Okay, the enemy has taken 1,654 damage from Drava's attacking turn. And the boss has 613 HP left. I also forgot to subtract the NP uh, from a casting Blazaza, so in a moment. Uh, it is now Mel's turn, by the way. Okay. I got thunder on my sword. Okay, you have replaced Spellblade Blizzard with Spellblade Thunder. And I will fucking giga spam Prison Katana. Two, three, four. Alright. There's nothing else will help me right now. Hell yeah, go Mel. Uh -huh. 
Alright, you have dealt enough damage to defeat the enemy. Okay, now, this battle has ended, but again, you will not be receiving EXP rewards because there's still fighting to be done. Now, even though uh, Isla and Iris did not say anything about uh, heading towards uh, Francesca's place, you all silently agree to head that way after uh, tending to your wounds and whatnot, and after Dreva consumes a quite a few ethers to get all of her MP back as she has spent, as you said, quite a bit of it. So, I'm gonna throw out some cures. And top, oh, that is a crit cure, hello. Bam. That's a huge cure. Jeez. So all of you are back at full health. Uh, Dreva is back at full MP. And... Before you all make your way to the nightclub, uh, if you would like to check the surrounding area for any other people who may, may or may not have been injured, or to help assist in getting patients out of the area, you may do so. Is this person, like, incapacitated, or are they, like, awake? Uh, there is... Uh, which person? The person up here. Uh, they are... They are... In a state of half-consciousness, half-unconsciousness. And... I'm assuming you asked it because you would like to help move this person, yes? I'm gonna carry them out. Okay, now before you make contact with them, I will ask you for a history roll. Uh, upon looking at him, you see the moving runes along his body, and you recognize what they are. And you remember that those are incredibly, incredibly dangerous. And you perish the thought of physically touching him. However, you do see that the hospital bed he is in has wheels on it. You unlock the wheels. And you transport his body to the other side of the hospital, where you can see uh, Iris and Isla waving you over. Now then, is there anything else you would like to do? I think we're good. Mel? Sorry, hello. My m uh, is a bit, uh, yeah history, right? No, you didn't have to do that. That no. was that was for. Lion. My bad. My mom walked into my room. Oh, okay. What, what is what is it? We're trying to save the. Uh, or it's making a decision, I guess, if you want to save any of the, the people inside before we leave. <laughs> Imagine I say no. My queen. <laughs> King Julian! You and this King Julian shit, bro. <laughs> For the girls, man. I love King Julian, he's such an asshole. I love Moritz, man. True. Right. So... Such a fucking chad. So you are assisting this person? Yes? No? Yes. Alright. I wanna assist all of them, can I not? Well, Iris and Isla have gotten the majority of the patients out of the hospital, and 
Lion has moved Silas to safety. I've got to move their tokens over here by the door as well. And the only other person in here to give assistance is, well, the unfortunate burn victim of Henry's actions, as in the mission prior, before you rejoin the party. So you open the door, and what do you say to them? Mind you, I will also add, they are in a very high state of panic. So, do be very careful with what you say. And you go first. Uh, Lion is physically not present with you. Because he is moving, he is moving an entire hospital bed over to Iris and Isla. Yeah, I can't touch him. He's got. Yeah, Wait, I... why do I have to be careful with what I say? She is, the person you are trying to help is freaking the fuck out. They're in an extremely high state of panic. Okay. Um, I slowly up. Can I open the door and walk and like make her look at me? Uh, yes, the, the the door is open already. Do I know her name? Oh, I, can I ask her that? It's like, hey, uh, what's your name? Uh, my 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 name. It's 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 Kira. Kira, yes. Um. How are you doing? You look, you look really, really, really worried. Are you okay? Before she responds, Dreva says, "I thought you, I thought we just said your name was Meredith." Oh no. What? Which one of those is your actual name? Uh, um, uh, yes, my, my given name is Meredith, but I prefer to go by Kira so that way people don't recognize me because I am the financial director's daughter and people want to ask me for favors a lot. <laughs> and let's see, where is, where is the role I'm looking for? Drava is not she's not buying it hmm. but for the sake of for the, for the sake of the situation she decides to go along with it and uh, Mel you may continue with what you were you, you asked her what her how, how she was right what her name was yeah okay how are you uh, well, my burn injuries from yesterday aside, uh, I'm as okay as I can be. And Drava says, okay, well, I know that the situation is not ideal at the moment, but you need to go. The, the, everything is in the midst of being evacuated because of the current situation of what's going on. So, come on. And very hesitantly, Meredith or Kira as she prefers to be called, stands to her feet. Drava tries to be as open and welcoming as possible, but well, she's not exactly... The expression on her face does not read, I am a friendly person right now. But begrudgingly, she stands to her feet, she joins Mel and Drava 
and she is eventually brought to the exit of the hospital. And now, uh, that is a, it is what I call a situational quest that has been completed. I will give you all that reward in a bit. In closing. Uh, Alright, so now, now you all uh, begin making your way towards the towards uh, Frankie's place but I will take a quick break and use the bathroom and I will return in a moment I am returned. Oh, I'm back. Okay. Alright, so now that I am back and the story can continue, we will all transition over to Francesca's nightclub office where you all have a very high sense of dread that something could be very, very wrong here. And upon storming inside the place, amidst all of the all of the broken doorways, nothing internally on nightclub seems to be broken. So the looks of confusion upon your face make sense when you can see Francesca, Zero, and Cynthia fighting a very very large adversary and nothing is destroyed please, before you have your reactions please place your tokens over by this door Ogre. Man, I'm trying. Oh, I I thought you I'm, were having I'm internet freshly. issues. My wait, my token is already here. Oh wait. Over here. Oh. Mm. Okay, so you want to storm inside, and the first thing you see, before you notice, Zero, Cynthia, and Francesca, you notice this large grotesque mach machination engaged in combat with the three of them. It looks like something that absolutely does not belong in this plane of existence as to describe it. What in the seven hells is that? Draver looks and she says I 
I have not a clue. Because the only other thing I've seen close to this when I did my past adventuring was... Well, it was more flesh-like. Well? Yes. Yes, do you have something you would like to say? Where did it come from? Is this, is this the priest? Uh, I would... I would hope it didn't turn into that thing. Um... That... Ooh, oh, I, I, I don't even want to... I don't want to think about the implications I could have. Okay. And you said things like this were more flesh-like. You've seen things similar? Uh, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, wait a minute. Um, uh, what the fuck? Okay, um, so... Apologies for the distraction, but, uh, my recording program, uh, also has my overlays active that I didn't know about until now, and my follower notification though just went off, like, seven times in a row. <laughs> yeah, we're getting popular as hell right now. Uh, I'm gonna look into that later, but getting back on topic, um, yes, uh, things like this were very much so more flesh-like, and, well, I guess I could say I'm grateful that it's more machine-based, uh, that doesn't make it any more, any less creepy, though. Uh, Zero cuts you off. Hey, if you're gonna stand there and look, come over here and fight! As he leaps away from it swinging one of its many appendages at Zero. As, as it does that, Francesca... Stops it with her arm and attempts to rip said appendage off. Oh, jeez. Is this the right song? Yes. Okay. So, as you all grow closer, or right, er, right. get closer, uh, you notice that it is emanating a very violent and malicious-like aura. And you can hear Roselia in the other room exclaiming that while it is not... The demon that the soul liberation has been working to summon forth. It is instead a, to put things lightly, a descendant of said creature. It is just, it is just as dangerous, but it is, if, if, if killed very quickly the lasting negative effects will not be as severe as if they re were to resurrect the sterla demon but this this creature this vile dis 
disgusting spawn of darkness itself. The thing, this thing is called a knot. And it must be dealt with very, very quickly. And with that, battle will resume yet again. And for this fight, Zero, Cynthia, and Francesca will all be temporary allies. Lit. So during that last fight, um, before the enemy perished, uh, Dreva had cast um, something to boost my next attack on it. Is that still lingering or is that gone? Yes, temper stays active up until you perform an attack. Sweet. Okay, so... Jareva... Instead of... her spending her time attacking first, she is going to immediately... cast... Patera on everybody but herself. That's one, two, three, four. Let me show you. Four and five. So everyone in combat, except for her, has an extra 50 to their defense. Mel, I do believe it is your turn. Hi, hi, hi. Bonjour, no? Monsieur. I go for my sexy dragon slices, as I usually do. One, uh, you are not in two. melee range, mate, lady. I, I cry and just cast fire on myself and kill myself. Um... I... I... Flash freeze slash I'm still not in range. Why? Whatever, I'm using an action. Punk! Hello. <laughs> I am here. Okay, now you are in melee am... range. Yes, now I'm in melee range. So I will use Dragon Slice four times. One, two, three, four. There we go. God, that was horrifying. Alright. It'll be my turn next. Uh, yep. Mel, you have dealt... 282 damage to the enemy. Er, to a knot, since you... Since I did say its name.
Don't forget, you all can talk while I type this stuff up. And I'm tired. <laughs> I had a meal ready and everything. And then this Giga bitch came from the fucking sky. <laughs> what is this thing? It's a Giga bitch. <laughs> a Giga bitch is right. I'm just a massive Giga bitch. And for what? What? Hopefully it doesn't take us all down with it. Hopefully no. Where do you think it came from? This guy. I mean... <sighs> I don't know. I have no idea. I'm looking forward to these next attacks since they all cast twice. All right, there you go. Oh fuck! What the fuck? Doesn't have a weakness, I guess. Oh, I that's so. that's what I forgot to include. Alright, there you go. Oh, yes. Alright, so... Since these are gonna be... Tempered, uh... Damn! Oh, no! <laughs> That's so bad. Sheesh. All right, you have dealt 3,100 damage to a knot. Okay, 
Now it will be. Uh, up next will be Francesca, as she still has a grip on one of its appendages. And her attacking role will be to see if she manages to rip it off. As she is oh so very much stronger than what she actually appears to be. Okay, so she pulls with all of her strength that she can muster. So much so, to where you can see small crackles of lightning coming off her body as she rips off its right arm and as it, as it rides uh, on the ground she glares at it and a lightning bolt comes from her eyes and the arm is no more and as a result of that a knot has taken a, an additional uh, 1000 damage As for Cynthia's turn, she is going to <coughs> excuse me. She is going to do a a signing motion with her hands, and she is going to cast Sueton on the enemy. So let me roll that out first. Okay, so a knot has been wet, has been hit with the water, so a knot is now considered wet. However, because of a knot's defense stat, a knot did not take any damage. But it is suffering from the wet status ailment. So give me a moment while I apply this icon. Uh, let's use. Hmm. Let's use this one. Uh, the, uh, let's use that one instead. Alright, and as for Zero's turn, he is going to strike it with his. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to dice roll on my phone. He is going to use million stab on the and on a knot so let's do oops aim for the eyes let's roll a 1d10 <laughs> to see if he heard you say that all right he heard it he is now aiming for the eyes Okay. Oh, baby. Alright, that's a... That's a crit. So seven, it's also a weakness. That's good. I like it. 793 times... Seven. Ooh. Okay, so because of the crit and zero striking one of its most prominent weaknesses Zero has done uh, 1500 damage to the enemy Eight. Wait, oh, I did that wrong Okay Okay now, for oh, uh, and, and because of million stab, a knot has been pushed back uh, ten feet. Now, with a knot's turn, it will open its series of attacks 
by casting Gravira on it. Uh, the point of origin of Gravira will be uh, uh, Francesca. So Mel, Zero, Francesca, Cynthia are all losing 20% of their max HP. And upon being struck, you happen to notice that Zero and Cynthia are not in very good of a shape as just before the spell finishes casting, they jump in front of Francesca to try and shield her from as much damage as possible. Oh my god. Oh shit, hang in there guys. Yeah. You gotta step in. Well... Uh, <coughs> Better said... Than done. And that is... That is Cynthia... Saying that to you all as... Zero seemingly does not physically react from being hit by the spell, mm. but he 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 is still harmed. But he does not. <clears throat> excuse me. He does not give a noticeable reaction to it. And for oops. And for Anat's next attack. Uh. It is going to cast... It is going to cast Firaga, not at a specific person, but just around the inside of location in general. To try and cause as, as much carnage and chaos as possible. Toggle this, and then let me toggle this, and I will do this, and I will roll a a one d six to see if any of you actually get harmed by this. Ah, uh, well, Dre was getting railed by by fire three. Oh dear. And because of the 9, it is a crit, so she is taking. I saw this one go boom, 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 boom. boom, boom, boom. And the last explosion that goes off hits Drava dead center. And let's see if she's knocked on her ass or not. Constitution save, go. Alright, she is hit by the attack, but she is not knocked off balance. But you can very clearly hear her say, God damn it, that hurt. Holy shit, this thing is gonna kill us. No, 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 no. Don't have, don't have that mentality. I can't handle it right now. Can you see it? I can see it. I mean, you know, let's take out Draven with one hit. <coughs> Rave, are you okay? <coughs> <coughs> yeah, uh, just <coughs> a little hot is all. You definitely look warm over there. Uh, as the prominent magic user here of the group, I very much say that it goes without saying <coughs> we need to be careful because I have a feeling 
that it can hit a lot harder than what it just did. Like that, I, I, I think this thing is no joke. I fought demons and stuff before, but this, this is something way out of my league. So it casted, it, it casted gravity, and then it did fires, and for Anat's next action, it is going to move in the air right next to Zero, and it is going to strike Zero with a double slash. Uh oh, wrong number. Plus. Oh, man. Um, wow, the enemy is having a real good time, ain't it? No, they are not. Okay, so Zero is hit. He is struck. He collides into Cynthia. And he takes 783 points of damage. And he is... He has been hit across the chest. And he is very much bleeding as his... As the armor he was wearing is fractured, pieces of it are missing, his shirt is torn, and there was a very large wound on his chest. Because he collided into Cynthia, Cynthia, by default, takes 100 points of damage. And she reacts to the pain far greater than what Zeril did. It's almost as if she felt the pain that he was supposed to have taken. And for action four, it is going to begin charging uh, Thundaga. And that will be the end of Anat's turn. Uh, Mel, it is your turn. Okay. Man. I hope you got something up your sleeve. I don't. What the fuck do you mean? Can I use my limit break? Is my LB up? No, it's not. Um. Well. Fuck, what's its weakness? Does anyone know its weakness? Wait. Is it uh, lightning? Concern. Crit. Magic, crit, and eyes. It's Concerning like your limit eyes. break, uh, a part the a part of me assumed that um you would have realized it was a boss and would have been doing your limit break energy accordingly, but uh, you have done enough damage in your in your previous turn to have full limit break energy. <laughs> Eight times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go Great. Eat. Eat now, this bitch. how do you want to describe yourself doing the limit break while I add You're everything? You're crying at this point. <laughs> uh, let's see. As I apply the bleeding effect to the enemy. Okay. Um. <laughs> Fuck, how do I do this? Hmm, the numbers on your limit break is wrong, but we can adjust that later. Um, okay, how am I describing this? Kind of a badass ultimate. Bro, I'm thinking like... 
full on my eyes turn red like the fucking avatar state but just there is a scarlet state but the male state the male state and like okay. it looks like a, like a red aura of super saiyan as my sword literally increases in size like crazy and it looks like lb3 of samurai but instead times better because it looks like there's a fucking dragon spawning behind it and then i just yeet it on him like just full strength full force okay so with your limit break uh i i did the i did what the number should be in my head and coming out the damage roll is 2,344 HP of the damage. So let me do this real fast. So that's 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. And now because of the secondary effect of your limit break, uh, a knot is now suffering from bleed and minus 20% defense. So... Uh, bleed will last for the next four turns on a knot, and its defense has dropped down to. It has dropped down to 400. Uh, you still have actions you can do. Fuck me. Let me break is one action. Okay, I'm gonna pr pr uh, magic, so prison beam four times. One, two, three, four. That's the only magic move I got. Unless, like, fire, blizzard, thunder, and cure, but like me. Yeah, that stuff is magic. Yep, me. <laughs> I'm gonna beam it. <laughs> Alright. Six, two, one, two, six. Okay, so that comes out to another 364 of damage. And now, because you rolled that four times, so do a do a 4d24 to see what resistances goes down. 1d34, oh, 4d. Uh, R four D twenty four. I did it. Oh. So I like sixty nine better. Yeah, I knew you would anyway. D. So its overall magic resist will drop by a stage and a half. So because of its mag magic weakness already making it take one hundred extra damage from magic attacks, it will now take two hundred and fifty extra damage from magic attacks. Well. Wow. Okay. I do believe it is now. You know what? Uh, in between turns, Francesca is going to cast haste. On, on, <clears throat> excuse me, goddamn, on Lion. So, Lion, your speed stat has been bumped by 10. Well, you are not, you do not outspeed Melodrava yet, but you are just a wee bit faster. And harder to hit for a knot. If it decides to use a single target attack on you. But, with Drava's turn... She is going to cast her own limit break and she's going to plant her staff into the floor and subsequently apologize for damaging the floor. So we've got D8 plus 9. So of her 
of her elemental based spells, she will use wind, fire, lightning, earth, dark, and ice. So that's six different elemental spells. So we're going to do 6d8. Uh oh, R slash 6d8. Plus her magic attack stat being 561. So the initial casting did 613. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. That is a lot of crits. Jesus Christ. Plus 250 per magic attack, right? For the weakness. Right, plus, plus the 250. So let's see here. Oh boy, and uh, we're gonna do that. Uh, hold on, wrong number, wrong thing. Okay, so then we do. Okay, well, Drava has managed to do whew, uh, 5,285 damage to a knot. And a knot very, very much loudly screeches in agony, so much so that it is ear piercing. And I will ask you all for a wisdom save. Fuck. <laughs> uh. Okay. So, Leon, you will be losing. This be, again, because you do not have MP, uh, you will instead lose all of your currently drawn spells, so you no longer have your glares, and you will also be losing 300 HP. So your overall HP will go down, but subtract your... Uh, temporary HP from the damage first. Okay, now, before anything else continues on, once a knot finishes screeching and whatnot, you can tell that its activity is beginning to cease ever slowly and slowly until it ultimately completely stops moving. It is still operational given the circuitry and lighting that you can see and whatnot. 
but when it comes to a complete halt it shakes slowly very very slowly and once it is once it is done shaking it begins moving its eyes slowly and it appears to be scanning all of you as you all really don't have a clue as to what it could possibly be doing but as the scanning continues you see it begin to resume movement and light up and amidst this amidst this continued movement you can tell that the metal pieces on the body itself are beginning to shake in such a manner that they are becoming loosened and the looser that they get they begin to fall off one at a time and make a very loud yet also very dull <laughs> clanging sound on the ground as Zero, Cynthia, and Francesca all back away from the creature as they do not want to be hit by any of the falling debris. You then begin to hear a very, very dull murmur. Almost like a growl type of sound. And... Before long, it begins to shine, shine in a annoyingly bright light to put things into perspective. And when the light fades away, it fades away very, very slow. But in that instance, it's almost as if time itself around the creature has stopped. The light has stopped moving. The creature itself has stopped vibrating. Even the pieces of metal... <clears throat> Even the pieces of metal on the ground has stopped shaking in place and bouncing all around when it made contact with the floor. And you hear a voice. And this voice speaks. You must fall and as it says that I will ask you all for an intelligence save and a constitution save and I'm eating it today <laughs> a constitution or intelligence both <laughs> Roll for Dreva in Uno Momentio. Give me but a moment. While I resort to my notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see here. Alright, gotta roll for Dreva now. Okay. So, 
everyone but Lion uh, successfully resists what Anat said to them as Lion feels almost compelled to drop his weapon. But Cynthia looks over to him and he regains his composure. And once Anat says what he was going to say, the light that was there earlier begins shining even brighter than before. And it's, it speaks in an unintelligible language. But you can tell that it's doing something very, very dangerous. Its power has surged tremendously. And it is in its burst phase. And Dreva and Mel have experienced before what an enemy in their highest powered state is capable of. And Dreva, I will roll a charisma save for her. Mel, I will ask you to do the same. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Riku, where is it? Where is charisma save? Oh! I'm fucking blind. Okay. So, the two of you hunker down and remain brave in the face of very clear, immediate danger. And... You steal yourselves for what is to come, as this battle will come to its conclusion at the beginning of our next session. You have 10 seconds to get out your fake sponsorship, fake whatevers, ready, set, go. Thank you so much for sponsoring us Amazon, and not only Amazon, but Chanel, fucking Versace, Dolce & Gabbana, fucking what else Riku, you're just like the best and you're supposed to be sponsored by everyone and there go your 10 seconds i am hitting the stop recording that... button mm -hmm. 